Hi guys, welcome to this video. In this one, I'm going to talk about the knockout that Jared Cannonier inflicted upon Jack Hermanson at UFC Fight Night 160, or uh, that's UFC on ESPN Plus 18 for those who, of you who are keeping track. So, uh, it was an interesting fight. There was a lot of stuff going on before this happened in the second round. So Hermanson had been trying to advance and pressure a little bit before the sequence. He just threw a leg kick that was uh, very well blocked by Cannonier. And this is when Cannoneer does what he does next, which is a, a really good setup for the uppercut. So what you'll see is, if you look at uh, the fight again, is that he steps first with his back foot, he steps forward with his back foot, and only then does he step forward with his lead foot. So he's getting into striking range with a replacement step, is what we often call it, and that way he covers the distance. Now, I'm going to go to the next frame, and at this spot he is in the right distance to strike. You can see that when you look at how close their feet are together, the lead legs are very close together. So this is striking range, right? Now contrast this picture here, what you see here, look at his hands, look at his head, his posture, he is standing fully upright, he's in balance, he's got his legs well underneath him, so he's in really good position to strike. But mainly, I want you to pay attention to what's going on with his hands. So let's go back to the previous frame and there you will see that his hands have pretty much stayed at the same level. Needed to get the circle here. So look at his hands here. They are he's in an on guard position and he hardly moves them at all as he steps closer. And this is key in making this work. So this is a staggered attack or delayed attack. So as he steps into range, he does what you normally don't do, which, which means he's not striking as he crosses uh, the distance. As he closes the gap, he doesn't hit right away. He doesn't set it up with feints. He just steps in. Now, most people step into range with a technique to cover, uh, to keep himself safe and put the guy under pressure as quickly as possible. But Kennedy does the opposite. He walks into range with a very carefully placed step and then doesn't budge an inch anywhere. So there's nothing betraying what's going on here. And at the same time, he is very intently watching Hermanson. So he's keeping a close track on any movement that he might spot. That would uh, mean a reaction from Hermanson to what he's doing. So there's no shoulder movement. Uh, he's, he's watching for a step. He's watching to see that there's a pivot going on in either direction, which would uh, betray whatever Hermanson is doing. So he's not doing none of that. He's stepping into range and getting ready to strike. Now from this position here, Hermanson knows that he's in trouble or that there's danger. Because from this position, uh, obviously, Cannonier can throw the left hand, throw the right hand straight, can throw an overhand, can throw the uppercut, could be a knee, could be a bunch of things that will immediately land because Cannonier already crossed the gap and is in striking range. It's a little bit tricky to pull off this tactic, but again, Jared did a really great job here, so uh, there's nothing we can say about that. Now immediately, a fraction of a second after this frame here, what you see is that Cannoneer is going to throw a feint with his left hand. So I want you to pay attention to this part here. So this is his hand and he's feinting with the left hand and Hermanson instinctively uses his right hand to parry, catch it, whatever you want to call it. Now he's throwing this kind of half-hearted left hand here, um, with, which is kind of an instinctive counter. So you parry with one hand and you jab with the other one. It's a very, very standard uh, counter to the jab. But as it's a feint and he, he realizes probably that it's a feint, he doesn't commit to that jab. And instead what he's going to try to do is shoot in for a takedown. Now, while this is happening, I want you to pay attention to this part here. Watch the, ar the right arm here of Cannoneer. The hand is, is in a good position. It is covering the side of his face. His elbow is covering the side of his body. So, And he's in a perfect position to still make adjustments if he wants to. He can still fire a straight shot, overhand, uppercut, that's all good. And the knee is also still there. So his entire right side is poised to strike. And it's his choice. Some fighters um, wait for the last possible second to pick the technique. Other fighters have already set it up and they use that left lead here with that feint to then predetermine which strike they're going to throw on the right side. And in this case, it could be that Cannoneer had, had seen the opportunity for the uppercut and he was launched, getting ready to launch it right away. So I want you to again take, take a good look at what the right hand is doing here. And this is the key to making it work. So he's not moving at all. That arm is pretty much immobile. 
So there's no movement betraying a setup, there's no wind up, there's no weight shift, there's nothing. So Hermansen couldn't see what was coming. He knew something was coming, but he couldn't see which technique it was. And at this distance, look at the distance between both men, there's not a lot of space, so that's striking distance. So at this distance, very often, the guy who launches first gets to land a shot. Not always, but very often so, and this is what Kananir does here. And then the next thing uh, that happens, like I said, Hermansen tries to shoot down and uh, go for some sort of take out, take down. And you'll see that Cannoneer is going to rotate his entire body, his upper body, his hips, his lower leg. Everything is going to rotate into that uppercut to make it a very powerful shot, as you see here in the next frame. So this is, I mean, I want you to watch just his positioning. It's really good. You can see that. He's got the right shoulder is forward, left shoulder has rotated back, his hip is engaged, he's driving off the back foot. It's all great technique to create a tremendous amount of torque and rotation here in his body, and that's what's going to drive that uppercut. And he catches it, the timing real well, because you can see that it lands just as Hermansen is ducking down for that takedown. You can see he's trying to reach around with his left hand here, his right hand is here low. So that's a that's really good timing, perfect setup from uh, Cannoneer. Nothing negative we can say about that. We can only admire the craft that he put into this uh, this setup and then the execution of it. And it lands. It lands pretty pretty well because Hermansen immediately stumbles backwards and he's trying to recover and he's seeing all the little birds and stars circling around his head. And immediately Cannoneer does the right thing and he tries to get him under control. So he tries to go for a double necktie, a tight plum, but he doesn't get it because Hermansen is actually at this stage, he's, he's backing up and immediately falling to the ground. So there's pretty much nothing to hold on to. Cannoneer, he flails a little bit with a right hand, trying to catch Hermansen on the way down, but he follows up right away into the ground and pound. And this is not a key to the victory, to getting the, the knockout here, is what he doesn't do, which, which is what we still see a lot of professional MMA fighters do, he doesn't dive on top of his opponent. He stays in a more stable position. So he's got his legs underneath him. Over here, he's leaning slightly forward so he can generate a lot of downward force as he rotates left and right with his upper body. But he doesn't just lean on top of his opponent, which can uh, have as a result that you end up in his guard. He doesn't want that. And you'll see that throughout the ground and pound that this is what happens. Cannoneer is going to get rid of this position here. And here you'll see two things that I want to point out. So first of all, look at how he postures up. He's really up high here. He's got a good solid base here with his legs. And he can drive down a lot of power here with that technique. And you'll see that he's going to mix doing one, two, one, two, three strikes with um, a half beat of him controlling with his arm the posture of Hermansen. So he's got some pressure here that is pushing downwards, that is controlling Hermansen. Hermansen is a little bit pinned onto the floor. Not pinned as in the wrestling sense or the BJJ sense, that's not what I mean. He is pinned in that it's difficult for him to get to either side, to roll, to do whatever to get up. So he's going to have a hard time doing that now immediately. If there were no striking, would he be able to get out of it? Sure, that's not the issue. However, as he's trying to get rid of this pressure here uh, that Cannoneer is putting on him with his left arm, as he's forced to handle uh, that problem, he's eating punches, he's taking punishment. And if you're already compromised from that uppercut, that's really difficult to do. So well done by Cannoneer here by mixing the strikes with the positioning and the control um, that he does here. And then another thing, he mixes up the, the big looping punches that we see often in ground and pound with well-placed hammer strikes. So he's doing hammer fists here, striking downwards. You can see that the left arm here is in the perfect position. It's got the arm bent, the forearm is vertical, the fist is ready to go, the thumb is pointing backwards, so he's going to hit with the correct part of the fist, and then he can just slam that straight down. And notice, once again, in the meantime, his posture. He's posturing up, he's got a good base here on both sides, so he can generate a lot of force from this position. He's still not leaning forward, he's still not crashing into his opponent, he's maintaining his position here where he has the advantage because he's just beating Hermansen up and it's going really well. 
And now we get to another face, and this is a really nice technique that I, I, I very much enjoyed the way that he set that up. As we see that Hermanson here was rolling towards his right side and, and changing his position to get get out of get out of there because he was taking so much so much damage. Um, there's a short phase when you watch the fight where you can see that Cannoneer is having uh, taking control of Hermanson's left arm. So once again. Thanks to his posture, because he's rooted from the knees through the body, he can create this line of force here where he can put pressure on Hermansen and keep him a little bit pinned down. Again, pinned down in the sense that it's difficult for Hermansen to immediately get up, meaning he cannot get up before he eats another punch. Sure, BJJ, grappling, groundwork, sure, this is not a, a dominant position, of course, but Cannonier doesn't need one. Because he, every punch that he lands, Hermanson has more and more of a difficult time just handling anything that happens. So, going to have the pressure here. So, we've got the left arm of Cannoneer and we've got the grip here with his fingers on the forearm. And he's going to load up this strike here. Now, notice again the acute angle in the elbow. That means that the arm is fully bent. And he's going to pull back the shoulder a little bit as well. So, and then everything is lined up to launch this powerful strike that is actually, I'm going to get rid of all the signs here, is going to come in the middle between the arms of Hermansen. So, these are the arms, and the line of attack is going to be just in between both of them, perfectly placed. The only way that Cannonier can do that is because he has this control here on the left arm of Hermansen. So he launches that punch and it's just, it's like um, an, uh, a long uppercut. It's going to land underneath the chin. And this is the moment where it lands. So you can see that it, it's driving all the way through. He rotated his shoulders into it and this is driving straight through. And that was a really powerful punch. So once again, notice how it just sneaks in between the arms of Hermanson. So it sneaks in between that, that blocking guard that he put up and it lands really, really well. And then we get to the final part where Cannoneer is just, I mean, he's unloading, he's, he's adding more punches to it. And uh, you can see that Mark Goddard is keeping a close eye. He's seeing that uh, Hermansen is, is simply just covering up. He's not defending intelligently anymore. The guy's taking too much of a beating. And we end up in the last part where very correctly the ref says, you know, let's, let's call it a day and, uh, and stop with this, this uh, one-sided beating. So that's it, guys. Well done by Jared Cannonier. Uh, I was very impressed by his performance, to quote uh, the anti-position the anti from George St. Pierre. Um, a great, really great performance and, and very much the kind of techniques that I like to see with a good setup, with good execution and then perfect follow-through. All right, that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this technical analysis. Um, you know, if you want to support the channel, Subscribe, obviously, uh, hit the notification uh, bell so that you know when I have a new video coming out. As always, like, share, subscribe, and you can also find out more of our content on MMA Formula on our Facebook page. Lots of stuff there, and I will talk to you guys next time.